Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. Likewise, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will the woman be? For all seven had been married to her. And Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are like the children, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the prophet in the passage about the bush, when he when he called, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well. And they no longer dared to ask him anything. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Two little bits of background about our readings, one of which is that Jesus in the Gospel is simply entering into a dispute that was ongoing between the Pharisees and the scribes on the one hand, and the Sadducees, who were the temple officials, uh, on the other. I won't go into detail on that, but in a sense, uh, Jesus is simply taking part in the common disputes of his day in this gospel reading. We, however, inherit that. We look at that as testimony that uh, as he has uh, risen from the dead, so we also shall rise in fulfillment in the, in the fullness of God's kingdom. Another bit of background for that first reading, the book of Revelation, there is a general principle that has been adhered to by the church for 2,000 years of how to read the book of Revelation that recently uh, evangelical fundamentalists in particular have uh, tended to ignore. And that is that the book of Revelation, as with all the prophetic books of, the old, of, of both Old and New Testament, <coughs> refer to the times in which they were written for the people who were uh, alive as part of the uh, community of Israel and the Christian community then at that time. They were not referring to <clears throat> events that would take place thousands of years later like now. On the other hand, uh, what we read in those books and particularly the book of Revelation can give us pause for thought that things don't change. Times don't change that much. And the struggle between evil and good 
in those days is really no greater and no less than the struggle between evil and good now. And we sometimes, in our human nature, tend to look back at sometime in the past, usually our past or in recent history, and think of the good old days and how terrible things have become since those good old days. It often is the case that we have selective memory, and if we really look at those days, they were old, but not all necessarily that good. And certainly if we look at the time of Jesus in the first century and the time when the book of Revelation and all of the New Testament was written, things were very, very turbulent. The two witnesses that are described in this book of Revelation, uh, many scholars will say either they are symbolic uh, uh, personifications of the law and the prophets, or maybe they were real representations of um, St. Peter and Paul because of the location, um, Sodom and uh, Jerusalem and all of those places were um, kind of summed up in Rome. Rome was the new Jerusalem, but it was also seen as the new Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, all evil um, resided there in the person of the emperor, who at that time was Nero. And uh, Nero, of course, put to death both Peter and Paul. And so the effect of Peter's and Paul's preaching throughout the world was kind of being echoed there uh, in this very graphic, symbolic way by the author of the book of Revelation. We need to you know, realize that um, we tend to do very much the same thing now, except the center of, of kind of embodying things in wild fantasy, fantastic language, now it tends to happen in Hollywood. And uh, they didn't have movies in those days, but what they did have was some very, very elaborate storytelling that attempted, as often Hollywood at its best tries to do, attempted to uh, say something important about the events that were, and the meaning of the events that were um, unfolding at that time. The bottom line here, especially now as we celebrate uh, uh, our Blessed Mother today, is that what, is, what continues to happen throughout the ages is meant to try to pull us away from our attachment to the things of this world, whether for good or for bad, to create space for God to enter. And Mary is certainly our model where she created that space in which God entered in his saving presence for all humanity. And so, in that, she truly is our mother and our model, and we pray that we may have the same openness to let God in that she has. And so let us pray. church throughout the world, and particularly for the new cardinals and the college of cardinals as they continue to uh, collaborate and sometimes struggle with our Holy Father in embodying and proclaiming the truth of Jesus' love and mercy uh, to all the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected and appointed officials, and particularly in this time 
of transition that they may allow the Lord's Spirit to guide them in the judgments and decisions that they make that affect our country, our communities, and our entire world. We pray for the Lord. Lord hear our for the poorest of the poor throughout the world, that we may see in them the face of Christ and respond to their cries for help. We pray for the Lord. Lord hear our for all of those who are uh, involved in the education of our young people, and for those who are seeking continued formation as adults, that the Lord may, the word of the Lord may guide them, we pray for the Lord. Lord for those who have died, and especially the uh, members of our families and of our own community here, we commend them to the Lord in his love and mercy, we pray for the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And finally, for our own particular needs and intentions, and those of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we ask that in your loving kindness you look with favor upon our prayers, for we offer them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. 